Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Monday, November the 9th. Today is the day the Church commemorates the life of Martin Chemnitz, pastor and confessor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food, and to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of a man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those whose hope is in his steadfast love. Our Old Testament reading today is from Jeremiah chapter 22. Thus says the Lord, Go down to the house of the king of Judah, and speak there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, who sits on the throne of David, you and your servants, and your people who enter these gates. Thus says the Lord, Do justice and righteousness, and deliver from the hand of the oppressor him who has been robbed. And do no wrong or violence to the resident alien, the fatherless, and the widow, nor shed innocent blood in this place. For if you will indeed obey this word, then there shall enter the gates of this house kings who sit on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their servants and their people. But if you will not obey these words, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. For thus says the Lord concerning the house of the king of Judah, You are like Gilead to me, like the summit of Lebanon. Yet surely I will make you a desert, an uninhabited city. I will prepare destroyers against you, each with his weapons. They shall cut down your choicest cedars, and cast them into the fire. And many nations will pass by this city, and every man will say to his neighbor, Why has the Lord dealt thus with this great city? And they will answer, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord, their God, and worshipped other gods, and served them. Weep not for him who is dead, nor grieve for him, but weep bitterly for him who goes away, for he shall return no more to see his native land. For thus says the Lord concerning Shalom, the son of Hosiah, king of Judah, who reigned instead of Hosiah his father, and who went away from this place. He shall return here no more, but in the place where they have carried him captive, there shall he die, and he shall never see this land again. Woe to whom who builds his house by unrighteousness, and his upper rooms by injustice, who makes his neighbor serve him for nothing, and does not give him his wages. Who says, I will build myself a great house with spacious upper rooms, who cuts out windows for it, paneling it with cedar, and painting it with vermilion. Do you think you are a king because you comp compete in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink and do justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and the needy. Then it was well. Is this, is this not to know me, declares the Lord? But you have eyes and heart only for dishonest gain for shedding innocent blood, and for practicing oppression and violence. Therefore thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Hosiah, king of Judah. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, my brother, or Ah, sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, Lord, or Ah, his majesty. With the burial of a donkey he shall be buried, dragged and dumped beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry out, and lift up your voice in Bashan, 
cry out from Abiram, for all your lovers are destroyed. I spoke to you in your posterity, but you said I will not listen. This has been your way from your youth, that you have not obeyed my voice. The wind shall shepherd all your shepherds, and your lovers shall go into captivity. Then you will be ashamed and confounded because of all your evil. O inhabitant of Lebanon, nested among the cedars, how you will be pitied when pangs come upon you, pains as of a woman in labor. Our writing this morning is from Martin Chemnitz, from his book on the Lord's Prayer. But deliver us from evil. We are taught in this petition to lift up our heads, to think upon and to desire the blessed life to come. This life is eternal, where there will be full deliverance from all evil. Because we are too occupied and immersed in the matters and affairs of this world and of this life, we also request that God would inspire, excite, kindle, generate, and preserve us in this thought and desire. The death of the godly is their deliverance from all evil and a beginning of everlasting happiness. Therefore, when we say, deliver us from evil, we desire that our Heavenly Father would keep us from an evil death. We ask for his deliverance so that we may not die the death of sinners. We ask that we may not die carelessly in our sins, unprepared without repentance, John 8, 24. But that he would grant us a godly and saving end of this life, we ask to die in the Lord, Revelation 4, 13, 14, 13. Furthermore, we pray that God would put us a concern and desire to prepare ourselves in advance for those things that are necessary, to be properly prepared for death. This is done so that we may be prepared for death because we do not want to be like those who have do not have oil in their lamps when the bridegroom comes and calls us. Matthew 25, 3. We ask that in the last hour of this life we may have true repentance, the word and sacraments, faith, hope, and the spirit of grace and prayer. These things we ask so that when we are to die we may be found in Christ. In this we rightly commend our souls into the hands of the Father. If we are found improperly prepared, we pray that he would not allow this to happen by a sudden, unannounced death, but would mercifully grant us time for such preparation. We ask that our death may be a deliverance from all evil and a passage out of this veil of misery to eternal life. About Mount Martin Chemnitz, Pastor and Confessor Aside from Martin Luther, Martin Chemnitz, 1522-1586, is regarded as the most important theologian in the history of the Lutheran Church. Chemnitz combined a penetrating intellect and an almost encyclopedic knowledge of Scripture in the Church Fathers, with genuine love for the Church. When various doctrinal disagreements broke out after Luther's death in 1546, Chemnitz determined to give himself fully to the restoration of unity in the Lutheran Church. He became the leading spirit and principal author of the 1577 Formula of Concord, which settled the doctrinal dis disputes on the basis of Scripture and largely succeeded in restoring unity among Lutherans. Chemnitz also authored the four-volume Examination of the Council of Trent, 1565-1573, in which he rigorously subjected the teachings of the Roman Catholic Council to the judgment of Scripture and the ancient Church Fathers. The examination became the definitive Lutheran answer to the Council of Trent, as well as a thorough exposition of the faith of the Augsburg Confession. A theologian and churchman, Chemnitz was truly a gift of God to the Church. We join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
O Lord, merciful and holy bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized. Therefore, we pray you, give and increase in us faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sins and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring, convert the unbelievers, bring the rebellious again to the unity of the Christian church, and show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all danger of body and soul. Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church and the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all government with the fear of you and let their ruling serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and our country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in a right knowledge of you, so that they may recognize your law and the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to all pious teachers. Comfort all the troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick. Grant to all pregnant women, according to your mercy, a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy give bodily and spiritually according to your good pleasure. Let those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels, and be a strong help to all who need you. For the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through the teaching of Martin Chemnitz, you prepare us for the coming of your Son to lead home his bride, the Church, that with all the company of the redeemed, we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.